speaker and the moderator. Professor Dot Angelo Cardarelli, welcome to join us. He's graduated in dentistry and prosthodontics at the University of L'Aquila in 2007, specialized in oral surgery at the University Sapienza of Rome in 2010. He's assistant professor and tutor at the University San Rafael of Milan. He's scientific advisor of the dental clinic of the department of IRCCS San Rafael of Milan. He's scientific advisor of the International University of Agadir, University of Paris. He's also a member of the Global Scientific Dancing Alliance in Dubai, Milan, and Isernia, where he practices an implant prosthetics and oral surgery. He's the author of numerous publications, speaker at international congresses of implantology and oral surgery. He's the author of the book, Isoelectric Surgery of Impacted Teeth, published in 2020. The topic that will be presented tonight in this webinar. Thank you, Professor, for joining us today to discuss this interesting topic. I would also like to introduce the moderator, Dr. Bozikri Khalid, a dental surgeon specializing in periodontology and oral implantology. He's a member of the American Academy of Periodontology, AAP, and Secretary General of the Moroccan Association of Implantology and Dental Aesthetics. I would like to specify that you can, dear audience, ask your questions as the webinar is launched so that we can treat all of them together at the end of the interpretation. Welcome, doctors. Dr. Buzkri, the floor is yours. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nadal. Thank you very much for inviting us, uh, Dr. Kamal Bin Mansour Tawassul group. Thank you for uh, the uh, speaker today, tonight. It's uh, my pleasure to have uh, uh, with my colleagues, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Angelo Cardarelli, He's my best friend in Italy. So uh, he's here uh, in uh, uh, this webinar to present uh, his uh, uh, lectures uh, as usual. Uh, very, very good uh, and high level lectures. And um, I, want, I want to tell you that uh, Professor Angeli, uh, uh, Angelo, he, he, he is here uh, uh, for, uh, for us. And you can uh, give us all the, your questions you need after his presentation. So, uh, dear Angelo, you can uh, start your uh, amazing presentation tonight. Thank you very much and uh, welcome everyone. I would like to thank Tavasol for uh, having me today and Dr. Benansur for giving me this opportunity. And I'm very happy to share this evening lecture with my dear great friend, Dr. Khalid. And um, in this lecture, I will introduce one of my best topic regarding the treatment of uh, impacted teeth using a new surgical procedure, because I think it's very important in our practice, especially in the oral surgery approach, to follow a minimal invasive procedure in order to reduce the invasivity and the morbidity for our patients. So I started with this procedure almost 12 years ago and I introduced in this procedure, I mean in the extraction of complex cases about impacted third molar, this new approach, this new device, using the ultrasound waves in order to remove the bone, in order to perform the ostectomy, preserving the bone, preserving the soft tissue, and using the selective cut, we can reduce the risk to injury, the vessel, and the nerves. So this is a new approach in the treatment of impacted. And as you can see from this emblematic picture, it's possible to treat uh, several cases, as you can see from this picture, using the piezo-surgery device, reducing the risk, reducing the risk of the fracture, reducing the edema, the swelling, and the pain for our patients. Because as I will show later during the lecture, with this device, it's possible to perform a very minimal invasive bone section. 
micrometric cut around the crown, preserving the bone, preserving the soft tissue. And if I have this possibility, I can reduce the pain for the patient, the edema, the swelling, and I can increase the compliance by our patients after this type of surgery. Because as you know, during the extraction of the impacted teeth, it's possible to have some problems during and after the surgery. For this reason, it's very important to manage this procedure in our hands with a predictable approach in order to reduce the problem and the risk during and after the surgery. So the question is, is it possible to perform a minimal invasive approach also in the extraction of impacted teeth? And uh, absolutely, the answer is yes, using the piezo device. And now I want to show this short video in order to understand this is a very easy case but it's very important to see this video in order to understand how we can use this procedure for example in this case we have a lower third molar and using this piezo device using the ultrasound waves using the cell irrigation during this procedure for example it's possible to perform the extraction with the flapless approach in order to preserve the soft tissue in order to obtain a good healing in terms also the soft tissue and the periodontal tissue this is easy case but as you can see using this procedure i can perform a very minimal invasive mastectomy i can preserve the soft tissue and using a very easy and safe procedure, I can remove this third molar. And after that, I can use a single node in order to close this wound. So as you know, during the eruption of the dental elements, it's possible to have some problems that can cause the inclusion. And as you can see from this epidemiological study, the incidence of the inclusion of this dental element is about 20%, with a predilection for women. And absolutely, the most frequent impact teeth are the lower third molar, the upper third molar, followed by the upper canine, lower canine, and other dental elements. And uh, it's possible to have local factors and systemic factors that can cause this inclusion. For example, extraction of the deciduous teeth, no arched space, ankylosis phenomenon, alteration of the follicle. But it's possible to have also systemic factors that can cause this inclusion. For example, hypothyroidism, dysplasia cleidocranica, as you can see from this particular case, regarding a very young patient, 15 years old. And as you can see from this OPG, we have a particular clinical case. We have a persistence of the deciduous state, uh, follicular um, radicular cystis, and uh, uh, sovranumerary teeth. And it's possible to understand better this X-ray if you can pay if you pay attention at this CBCT reconstruction in order to understand better this clinical situation. So for example, in this case, we need to perform a multidisciplinary approach in order to remove the impact of it, in order to maintain the space, in order to place the implants after the healing, for example. But uh, have a look at this pictures in order to understand the uh, advantage that I can have using this device. For example, in the extraction of the lower impact distal third molar, as you can see, using this device, and we have, and I will show later better this 
things we have the different tips with different shape according to the different clinical approach so we will have the insert for the sinus lift procedure the insert for the extraction the insert for bone splitting the insert for the implant placement the insert for the extraction and if you pay attention at this image in the middle Using this device, it's possible to perform a very micrometric bone section, as you can see. And in this particular case, this ostectomy is more than half in order to remove this impacted distal third molar. Because in this case, I can reduce this ostectomy using the piezo, and after that, I need to cut the distal part of the crown in order to move this third molar with minimal invasive and ease procedure and predictable procedure. And uh, have a look at this image. On the left, we have the ostectomy performed with the straightened piece and traditional bars. So as you can see, we have a very huge ostectomy. Instead, on the right, we have this new approach. Using the piezo insert, I can reduce this ostectomy. So I can reduce the invasivity during this procedure. This is a very minimal and micrometric bone section. And I can do it using the piezoelectric characteristics like micrometric and selective cut using the ultrasound vibration with different power according to the different clinical application using high saline irrigation in order to reduce the, uh, uh, the risk of the necrosis using this device using the bone ostectomy and again another case regarding the germectomy so in uh, some of my cases, in the young patient, I prefer to remove the crown before the roots development. This procedure, as you know, is called germectomy. So I will remove the germ. And this is the surgical scenario after flap disconnection. So in this case, in this vestibular site below, the bone, we have the germ, and I can perform this ostectomy using the piezo surgery device. So I can remove the bone, and after that I can see the crown, because in this case, we have only the crown without the roots. This is the germectomy approach, and after that I can cut the crown in two, three, four parts according to the dimension of the crown and they can use the same insert because using this device using an high power i can cut the crown so this is amazing because using only one device i can perform the ostectomy and i can cut the crown especially in the germectomy especially in very young patients and have a look at the residual cavity after the germectomy. Very, very small ostectomy. And if you pay attention, preserving the bone in the distal part of the second molar is very important for the periodontal reason. So this is a minimal invasive procedure. Preserving the periodontal and the soft tissue, performing a very minimal invasive ostectomy. And after that, I can fill this cavity with the collagen sponge and I can close the flap using two, three single simple nodes. And as you can see, I will use always the same flap, the triangular flap with only one horizontal incision between the first and the second molar to preserve the papilla and one vertical distal incision, avoiding the lingual side. Because as you know, on the lingual side, we have the lingual nerve and absolutely I need to preserve the nerve. 
And also, and it's very important, this thing, I need to use in this surgery, but in all type of the oral surgery procedure, the dedicated instruments. As you can see, I will show different clinical case, but we will have the same surgical view because I will use the same protocol, the same flap, and the same instrument. So I use always one retractor in the anterior side and the another one in the posterior side in order to hold the flap, in order to protect the vessel and the nerve included in the periosteum. And I can see this amazing view. So with these views, I can go ahead with easy and safe approach because I can protect the vessel and the nerve. I can have a good surgical view. And also using the physiosurgery device and using the cavitation effect through the cell irrigation, I can reduce the bleeding during the extraction. This is another advantage that I can have using the piezo, the bleeding reduction during the surgical procedure. As you can see from this image, we have a very clean surgery. Another case, as I said a few minutes ago, different clinical case, but the same, the same surgical view, the same flap. We have, again, another lower tier demolar, so I will use the same retractors, the same flap, and now it's possible to see the crown. So using the piezo-surgery device, avoiding the straightened piece and the traditional bars, with this approach in close contact with the crown of the lower third molar, I can perform this very small ostectum. Have a look, this image. And this ostectum, this ostectum is always more than enough in order to remove this third molar. And as I said before, I will fill this cavity with collagen sponge and I will use single simple nodes in the distal part. I never use the suture at the base of the papilla because using this flap, and if I can manage with a good approach the soft tissue, I can close this flap without tension and avoiding the suture at the base of the papilla because this incision, it will be a good way in the days after the surgery in order to reduce the edema and the swelling in the days after. Using the triangular flap, another case of germectomy, different case, but the same surgical view, same flap, same approach, same retractor, small ostectomy, preserving the bone in the distal part of the crown and which is the advantage of the germectomy procedure. Using the germectomy procedure, I can prevent the issue, the issues caused by the inclusion and the position of the third molar, because I can remove this uh, third molar before the roots development. And obviously I can use also if I have a Follicular cheese in close contact with the third molar, as you can see, following always the same procedure and performing a very minimal invasive ostectomy. And uh, in these videos, it's possible to understand better the difference using that we have using the straightened piece on the left side. This is the traditional approach, and on the right, we have the piezo approach. So on the left, we have a very huge and big ostectomy, as I said before, like this. Instead, on the right, I have a micrometric bone section, exactly like this. This is totally different in comparison with this approach. 
And now I want to show the uh, germectomy performed with the piezo surgery procedure. So we have this clinical situation at the beginning, 15 years old. So we have the crown without the roots and the crown is covered, completely covered by the bone in the angle of the mandible. So as I said before, I will use the same flap, the triangular flap with one horizontal incision and the one vertical incision. It's very important in the distal part to hold the soft tissue using the retractors in order to perform a very precise soft tissue incision, as you can see from this video. And this is the triangular flap. After that, I can reflect this full thickness flap using the retractors and I can go ahead with the piezo insert. In this case, I need to remove the bone like this because the crown is below the bone and I can use different insert, the sharp, with the sharp shade like this. And after that, I can see the crown of this germ, like this. After that, in the germectomy, as I said before, I need to perform the crown section in order to, I prefer to cut the crown in several parts instead to have a huge ostectomy. So now it's possible to see the crown of this germ. So using the same insert, I can cut the crown, I can increase the power on the head of the maniple, and after that I can cut the crown. With high power, with high saline irrigation, I can perform this crown section exactly like this. Avoiding the burns, avoiding the turbine, avoiding the straightened piece. Using only the piezosurgery procedure. And obviously, I need to use a dedicated luxator in order to remove this residual part and a dedicated forceps, angulated forceps, like this. And this is the residual part of the gel. As usual, small ostectomy, clean surgery, and I can fill this gap, this cavity with collagen sponge. And after that, I will close the soft tissue using the interrupted suture without suture at the base of the papilla, minimal invasive approach. So we have the possibility to choose different insert according to the different procedure with the different shape. For example, if I need to remove the bone before the implant placement, as you can see from this very particular case, in which case in, in uh, which we have a very huge amount of the bone in the maxilla. So before the implant placement, I need to obtain a good bone shape so I can perform the ostectomy using the piezo, using this insert, for example. And as you can see, using this insert, I can perform a very precise bone section. Another application, for example, in case of osteonecrosis in the patient under uh, bifosfonatis therapy, uh, as you know, using these drugs, it's possible to have this phenomenon after the extraction, for example. So we have this necrosis area, as you can see from this image in the maxilla. So I need to remove after the full flaps, uh, full thickness flap disconnection, I need to remove this osteonecrosis area and using the cavitation effect, using the ultrasound waves, I can clean this surface from the bacteria. I can clean, I can remove the bacteria 
inside the necrosis area. And after that, we have this view and the healing of the soft tissue only two months later, using the piezo in order to cut the bone and in order to clean using the ultrasound waves the area from the bacteria. Sometimes during the treatment of atrophic mandible, for example, we need to perform the ostectomy. And if we have an old patient with some systemic disease, with some disorder like coagulation disorder, we need to manage in the good way these problems. For example, in this case, we have the patient in which I need to place two implants. This is old patient in order to fix the removable prosthesis. But as you can see, before the implant placement, I need to change this bone plate because I need to obtain the same bone level in order to place the implants at the same level for the prosthetic reason also. So I can use with the minimal invasive flap I can use the piezo, and it's very interesting to listen the sound of the piezo in order to cut the bone. And using this ultrasound wave, I can remove the bone, and also I can reduce the bleeding also in this patient with the blood disorder. And as you can see, in this case, I use another insert with a different shape according to this clinical case and this is the bone mastectomy performed by the piezo and after that I can place two implants so this is the ostectomy and the bone section performed by the piezo and after that it's possible to see the apophysis Jenny so this is a very extreme bone resorption in the bandible. And after that, I can place the implants at the same level after very precise and at the same time, minimal invasive ostectomy using the piezo. Sometimes we have a lesion or the molar in close contact with the sinus. For example, in this case, we have the big odontoma in close contact with the sinus. So using the piezo, I can reduce the risk to injury the sinus and I can remove this odontoma using the piezo surgery procedure, preserving the sinus cavity, exactly like this. And also, as you can see, using a very small flap procedure, exactly like this. As I said before, uh, usually uh, you can use the piezo for born uh, section, but now with the new device, according to the characteristics of the new device, you can increase the power and you can cut also the crown. This is amazing. Have a look this case. This is the geometric procedure performed by the piezo for the ostectomy and for the crown section, exactly like this. Using the S-shaped luxator, I can remove the residual part of the crown. Same procedure. Don't forget that during the extraction, we can have a particular root shape like this, for example, regarding the 
lower third mora in the vertical position, but the half of the crown is covered by the bone of the branch of the mandible. So in this case, according to the shape of these roots, I need to cut the roots in order to remove this third molar, avoiding some problems. So obviously you can use for the crown section also the bars, the traditional bars for the crown section. But don't forget that you need to use a dedicated bars with a dedicated shape and a right long sides, exactly like this, in order to perform a very precise section. And for this reason, according to the Italian brand called Butterfly, I decided to introduce this first Barnes kit for the impacted third molar. So in this kit, you can find all Barnes for the crown section with different sides and different lengths. Because don't forget, for example, in the extraction of the impacted distal third molar, in order to remove this dental element, I need to cut the distal part of the crown and I can use a long band. And after that, using a distal movement, I can remove this third molar. And again, it's very important to perform a precise crown section in order to remove the horizontal third molar exactly like this. Only after that, I can remove the roots. Because as you know, the um, anatomy of the roots of the third molar is much variable. So it's possible to have a favorable shape, but it's possible to have a very challenging case like this. We have a very divergent roots. So in this case, we need absolutely to avoid the fracture of the tuberosity in the posterior side of the maxilla and the fracture of the apex. So using this procedure, we can reduce the risk that we can have during and after the surgery. Edema, swelling, pain, bleeding, alteration of the sensitivity on the alveolar nerve and the lingual nerve. The abrasion of the soft tissue using the straightened piece, the fracture of the cortical bone during the extraction, the fracture of the apex during the extraction. And in some cases, as you can see, if I don't use a correct approach, I can have the fracture of the mandible exactly like this after the extraction of this third molar. In this case, absolutely, I need to perform the osteotomy and I need to cut the roots in order to reduce the power of the extraction, avoiding this issue. And also, why I need to manage correctly the soft tissue? Because if I will have a good approach, I mean, if I will manage better the soft tissue, I reduce this problem, this echemosis related to the bleeding, related to the perforation of the periosteum during the surgery. I can reduce the edema because I will use a very minimal invasive flap. I can preserve the periosteum using the piezo. And sometimes, as we can see from this video, it's possible to have an important bleeding after the extraction. But this is a normal situation if we have a close contact between the alveolar nerve and the roots. Because as you can see in the alveolar canal, we have the alveolar artery and alveolar nerve. So if we have a close contact, we can have uh, an important bleeding after the surgery, but this is not a problem. We can manage 
this bleeding after the surgery with the uh, collagen sponge, with the hemostatic sponge. Regarding instead the incidence of the alteration of the sensitivity on the alveolar nerve, as you can see, the incidence of the interruption of the sensitivity on the alveolar nerve over six months is comprised is uh, uh, before the range is from zero point percent to zero point nine percent. Instead, the incidence of a uh, Persistent alteration of the lingual nerve after six months is between 0.5% to 20%. So don't forget that in the extraction of impacted teeth, we have a high risk to injury the lingual nerve instead the alveolar nerve. And in case of the alteration of the injury of the lingual nerve, we can have the alteration of the sensitivity, pain, lack of sensitivity, and alteration during the phonation, alteration of the tongue sensitivity with some discomfort for the patient. So in case of the injury, in case of the uh, problem related to the injury of the lingual nerve or the alveolar nerve, we can use this protocol. So we can use the cortisone drugs and the neuroprotective drugs with vitamin B in order to increase the healing and uh, antibiotic drugs in order to reduce the symptoms and the pain during this period during and after the surgery. As I said before, using this device, I can perform the surgery in close contact with very um, important anatomical structure like this. For example, if I need to remove this premolar in close contact with the mental nerve, the emergence of this uh, the crown of this premolar is on the top of the emergence of the mental nerve, but I can do using the piezo, preserving the mental nerve at the same time, exactly like this. So I can perform this home I need to mark the emergence of the nerve using the pencil of the bone so I can see the emergence of the nerve during the surgery and they can avoid to injury it as you can see in this case i use the trapezoidal flap so in this case we have one mesial incision and one distal incision full thickness flap obviously using this insert i can perform this bonostectomy preserving and uh, protecting the mental nerve using the retractors exactly like this And after that, I can see the crown. And we are, we are, we are, sorry, we are in close contact with the mental nerve. Very challenging case. And this is the situation after the bonus tectum. We have the crown in close contact with the mental nerve. And after that, I can remove this premolar. Obviously, also in this case, I need to perform the crown section, and after that, I can remove the root, preserving the mental nerve. This is one of the advantages that they can have using the piezo. This is the crown section performed by the piezo procedure. And in this case, it's absolutely mandatory to fill the residual gap with the bovine bone in order to maintain the volume for the implant placement after six or nine months later. 
So this is regarding the lower to the more, this is our surgical scenario. So we have in the thickness of the cheek, the facial artery, the lingual nerve on the lingual side, and this is the triangular flap, one horizontal incision and one vertical vestibular incision in order to preserve the lingual nerve. Because as you can see from this image, in 14% of our cases, it's uh, possible to have this situation. In this case, the, med, the lingual nerve goes on the top of the crest. So we have an high risk to injury the nerve during the flaps disconnection. But likely in 86%, we have this favorable situation. But don't forget the diameter uh, is very huge the diameter of the lingual nerve. So, for example, as you can see from this cadaver dissection, if I need to disconnect also the uh, soft tissue in the lingual side, for example, if we have the crown on the lingual position, I can do it with the full thickness flap, protecting always the lingual side with the periosteal. Because as you can see from this cadaver disconnection, the lingual nerve is in the thickness of the soft tissue in the lingual side. So if I can reflect the uh, full thickness flap, I can protect the nerve using the periosteal without problems. And again, this is the shape of the flap, triangular flap, one vestibular and one horizontal incision. This is the occlusal view, only one incision in the vertical side. In the distal side, the same flap that they can use, for example, in case of the apicectomy. And again, triangular flap in the impacted third molar, micrometric section performed by the piezo. In this case, I can cut the crown in the distal part, and after that, using the luxator in the mesial part, I can remove this third molar after the uh, distal part of the crown. Uh, section, and this is the small cavity, the collagen sponge, and the suture. As usual, minimal invasive approach using the same protocol. And now I want to show this case in which uh, you can see the use of the piezo in the treatment of the impacted lower third molar. This is the resume about this procedure. As I showed before, the same flap, two retractors, one in anterior, one in posterior side. The uh, tongue retractor is very important to use the tongue retractor in the lingual side in order to protect the tongue. Two incisions, the vertical and the mesial one the triangular flap and after that I can go ahead with the piezo insert in order to perform this ostectomy and another advantage that I can have using the piezo, I can perform a deeper ostectomy in close contact with the crown along the roots surface in order to disconnect the bone by the crown, from the crown. According to the X-ray pre-op, I need to cut the roots and the crown in order to remove this dental element. And in this case, I use it, for example, the turbine, but it's very important to see the, the very precise crown section. And after that, using the luxator, I can remove the distal one like this. and the measure one. Maintaining always the small ostectomy. And as you can see, it's possible to see the bone septum inside the cavity. So in this case, absolutely is mandatory to perform the root section in order to remove this dental element. So don't forget the surgical procedure step by step. Different clinical case, but as you can see, I use always the same procedure with the same results in terms of the 
healing in terms of the edema, the swelling, and the pain for our patient, and in terms of the compliance by our patient. And as usual, single notes in order to close the flap. In some cases, I need to treat the aesthetic area. As you can see, in this case, we have a young patient with the temporary crown, but as you can see, we have the central incisor in the horizontal position. So we need to treat this case. We need to remove this central incisor and to fill the cavity to perform the GPR in order to place after six or seven uh, six or nine months the implant. Also, in this case, I use the piezo in order to perform a very micrometric section, I fill the cavity with the collagen, with the, uh, sorry, with the bovine bone covered by the collagen membrane, the sutures, and the healing two months later with the new temporary crown, Maryland crown, and after six months, we will place the implant in this side. So as you can see, using these ultrasound waves, we can have a very important, clinical results, micrometric cut, selective cut, and the reduction of the bleeding. So with micrometric cut, we can have a very high surgical control and I can work also in the uh, high anatomical risk site like basal nerve and like sinus membrane. And again, I can reduce the bleeding using the saline irrigation. And using two different types types of ultrasound waves, I can clean continually the surface of the insert by the bone in order to reduce the risk of the necrosis. So using this piezo, I can perform a very precise bone section. In this young patient, for example, I need to recover the second molar and I need to remove at the same time the third molar. Performing this bone blown section using the piezo, very minimal preserving the crown of the second model. And have a look at this amazing image, this amazing bone section performed by the piezo insert. And especially if we have some problems during the extraction of the impacted third molar in close contact with the nerve, and if we have the fracture of the apex, we can remove this apex also in close contact with the nerve, because with the, the piezo insert, we can use the selecting cut in order to avoid to injure the nerve. And we can treat also the impact of the canin in the palatal side. Have a look at this very challenging case in which we have double impact of the canin with the apex in close contact in the both side with the sinus, as you can see from this red line. This is the occlusal view. I perform it in this case, the um, envelope flap, as you can see, using the suture in order to hold the flap. I perform the ostectomy so I can see the crown of the canning. After that, I can remove both canning with the small cavity and I can fill. Obviously, I need to cut the crown and the roots of the scanning, and this is the situation a few hours later a few hours after the surgery. Both extraction, small ostectomy, interrupted suture, without problems also for the management of the soft tissue. And obviously we can treat a big lesion in close contact with the nerve, again, preserving the mental nerve exactly like this, performing a very precise bone section, like this. And in order to understand better the result that we can have also in terms of the healing of the soft and the hard tissue, have a look at this image. We, um, in this case, we have the same uh, patient treated with two different approaches. Here we have the ostectomy performed by the uh, straightened piece, and this is the histological result. We have a huge necrosis area along the bone ostectomy. Instead, below we have the ostectomy performed by the piezo, and we have a better result in terms of the necrosis area. And this is an amazing in terms of the healing. And again, another histological result. We have the, the ostectomy performed by the traditional bands, 
and the ostectomy performed by the piezo. Very precise incision. Osteotomy performed by the uh, straight and piece and osteotomy performed by the piezo. Minimal invasive osteonecrosis area again. And obviously we have different, many publications about this procedure in comparison with the traditional bars and uh, uh, we have an important advantage, as I said before, and this is, for example, the impacted kit uh, in which you can find all instruments for the extraction of impacted teeth. We have these long sites for the treatment of the upper third molar, for example. As you can see, in case of the germectomy or the lower third molar, I can use these long sites in order to perform this ostectomy. Same procedure. The insert for the crown section, as I said before, different insert. For example, this particular insert I can use to disconnect, to remove the cyst uh, from the bone like this, using the, the ultrasound vibration in order to disconnect the. Uh, the cyst. We can use also in the orthodontic treatment in order to recover the canning like this. We can perform the ostectomy around the crown like this. With another insert. So I can I can touch the crown of the cannon without problem. Obviously, as you can imagine, it's not possible to do the same using the traditional bar. And after that, I can recover passing through the cavity this cannon. So this is the resume about the use of this piezo surgery insert. I need to use this insert in close contact with the crown or with the roots, preserving the bone. So after that, I will have a sufficient space between the roots and the bone, and I can remove this dental element without problems, especially in the buccal bone side. So we have a different application in the extraction surgery, implant surgery, in osteoplastic surgery, in the sinus lift procedure and also in endodontic procedure. For example, if I need to keep this dental element because we have the bridge restoration, so absolutely I need to keep this canning so I can perform this flap, trapezoidal flap. And using a different insert with the diamond shape, I can perform the ostectum in order to see the apex Of the, uh, of the canning because as you know in the um, in the apicectomy I need to cut at least two or three millimeter of the apex and they can use the piezo but this is uh, another case in which I use it for example straightened piece in order to cut the apex exactly like this Okay. This uh, surgery uh, has been done in the microscope view. So now after that, after the apex resection, I need to prepare using the same piezo with different tips, the apex of the canning in order to close the apex using the MTA. I can check with the small mirror for the endodontic surgery. I can treat the surface with the edges.
I can see with the mirror. After that, I need to dry the cavity. And I can use the MTA to close the apex. with the photopolymerization procedure. I need to remove the residual part of the MTA. And I fill the cavity with the collagen. And this is the X-ray post-op and the suture. So another application of this procedure, the apicectomy, another case, the use of the piezo, the preparation of the apex using the endodontic insert. And as I said before, we can use this insert in the surgical orthodontic recover. The semi lunar flat. This is the orthodontic recovery. surgical orthodontic recovery so I can use the pieces in order to remove the bone after that I can see the crown of the canning exactly like this the acid to treat the surface as usual and the bracket for the orthodontic recover, recovery using the straight wire passing through the cavity like this. And then I can close with single sutures. Like this. this is another challenging case in which I use the piezo. This is a very interesting case. In both sides, we have a close contact with the mental nerve, the intraoral view, right side and left side. So there is the indication for the extraction of this 
impact the molars. In the right side, I use the same flap, the same piezo procedure, and this is the situation of the extraction. On the left side, we have the second molar in close contact with the mental, with the alveolar nerve, but using the piezo, I can treat also this case with a very low risks. And this is the healing one year later in both sides. And as I said before, sometimes we need to treat an old patient with the sun follicular cyst, as you can see. And it's very interesting to see the, uh, 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 the CBCT in which you can see the dimension of this huge cyst. So I performed the same flap. I can use this range in order to reduce the volume of this cyst. And after that, using always the piezo, I can cut the roots and I can remove the third molar and the big lesion, as you can see. And after the extraction, it's possible to see the bone attached to the lingual part of the third molar. And as usual, the collagen sponge. In this case, I used the horizontal mattress in order to avoid that the soft tissue goes inside the residual cavity. And this is the healing one year later in all patients using the piezo surgery procedure. And again, another interesting case, big lesion using the bone block approach in order to remove this very big cyst. but performing and following always the same approach. Another interesting case regarding the approach of the maxilla in which I removed a small cyst using the same flap that I showed before and using the piezo procedure. Obviously, we can use this procedure also in the upper jaw in order to avoid, the, for example, the fracture of the tuberosity after the extraction. So in the surgical approach of the upper to the molar, I can use the triangular flap and I can use the piezo in order to perform the small ostectomy, avoiding the fracture of the tuberosity area, exactly like this. So after that, I can use the straight luxator with the distal movement in order to remove the third molar. With the distal movement, exactly like this. Okay, easy and safe approach. So don't forget that during the extraction of the upper third molar, we need to follow this distal movement. And obviously, if necessary, we also, we need to cut the crown also in the upper third molar. And now, as I said before, we have this new insert for the treatment of the upper third molar. And uh, I want to show, sorry, this last case.
quick lecture, I would like to remember my book about the treatment of piezosurgery procedure. And this book actually, it's available in English version, in Russian version, in Arabic, in a Farsi version, sorry. And also in the next month, it will be available also in the Chinese version. So thank you for your kind attention. And if you have any question, please feel free. Thanks again, everyone, for uh, your kind attention. And uh, I hope to meet uh, all of you very soon in person. A little ad break, dear audience, and we'll be back. Vous êtes à la recherche de la meilleure formation professionnelle en matière de santé Des cours en ligne ou en présentiel Des ateliers pratiques, des conférences, des congrès, mais aussi des symposiums, des webinaires et bien plus encore BK Med Event est la meilleure plateforme de connexion entre les professionnels de la santé et les acteurs de la formation continue. Sur la plateforme en ligne de BK Med Event, vous allez retrouver tout ce qu'il vous faut. Des prestataires du monde entier réunis en un seul endroit. Et si vous êtes des prestataires de la formation continue, nous avons une bonne nouvelle pour vous aussi. Juste restez focalisés sur votre programme scientifique et BK Med Event se charge du reste. De l'inscription des professionnels de la santé à la remise des attestations en passant par une campagne de communication professionnelle pour mettre en valeur vos projets. Welcome back. Now we can move to treat the viewers' questions, if there is any. So the first question is, what are the pre and post surgical pharmacology? Yes, this is a right question. Before the, um, before the surgery, for example, if we need to treat the third molar without infection, without acute infection, I use always two grams of amoxicillin one hour before the surgery and uh, After the surgery, one gram two times per day for five days later. And also, I use four milligrams of steroids before the surgery and four milligrams immediately after. And uh, obviously, the painkillers for the first two days after the surgery. And also, another interesting uh, thing is the use of the conscious sedation. In some of my cases, I use always the conscious sedation because with the conscious sedation, you can check the uh, blood pressure, you can uh, reduce the bleeding during the surgery, and you can use the steroids and the painkillers with the intravenous injection during this. Okay, so what is the next question? Uh, how about the patients at risk? Uh, in what do you mean about the, the, the use of the piezo in the patient at risk or yes. I think it is safe to use the piezo electric interventions when it comes to patients at risk it is safe Ab or not absolutely is absolutely safe because with the piezo you can manage better the patient with some systemic disease diabetic patient patient with the, um, some disease related to the bleeding, the alteration of the coagulation, absolutely. It's absolutely safe. Okay. What are the post-operative indications? After the extraction of impacted teeth, the patient needs to follow a soft and a liquid diet for three days after the surgery. And also, um, the patient needs to uh, take the antibiotics therapy, the painkillers, and two uh, 
uh, used the eyes on the external part of the face for the first day immediately after the surgery for 20, uh, for, uh, 20 minutes with uh, 20 minutes of the, the, the application with the, um, the eyes on the external part of the face in order to reduce the edema. Okay. The next question is, I'm a pedodontist. Can I use the piezo surgery for kids? What are the limits? Absolutely. There are no limits. As I showed before, in the very young patient, I treat, for example, 13 years old patient in order to remove the germ. So using the piezo, you have an amazing advantage, especially in very young patients. Okay. What about the coronation? About the coronectomy, uh, there is also my publication about this procedure, but uh, I, using the piezo, you can avoid this procedure because I don't like the use of the coronectomy. I prefer to remove the residual part of the roots because I don't know what happened in the future. So I prefer to remove the root also if we have a close contact with the nerve because using the piezo, I can do it. Obviously, if I haven't the piezo, I can remove the roots in close contact with the nerve because we have a high risk to injury the nerve. But with the piezo, you can do it. All right. I would like to ask the potency of the power to cut bone and teeth, the adjustment of the piezo device, and also quantity of saloon while cutting bone and tooth structure. Yes. Obviously, it, yes, sir. It, it, it depends uh, from uh, which type of piezo do you use. For example, actually, I use a uh, piezo from uh, Italian brand called Esacrom. So, regarding the saline irrigation, I would like to suggest you the use of the high saline irrigation in order to reduce the risk of the necrosis. In terms of the power, you can use the max power in order to cut the crown and you can reduce the vibration if you need to cut the crown. If you need to cut the bone, you can increase the vibration and you can reduce the power. The next question uh, is just a compliment. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Do you use P yes, PRF yes. or PRP? Yes, I did some cases uh, using the PRP and the PRF instead of the collagen inside the cavity. So you can have a better result in terms of the healing. You can use in order to uh, reduce the time of the healing after the surgery and also using the PRF and the PRP, you can reduce the risk of the dry socket after the extraction. Okay, all right. Uh, the serious question, piezo and pacemaker? Actually, with this new device, you can use the piezo also in the patient with the pacemaker. Right. It, it depends which type of piezo do you use. How do you do with, with a patient using an anticoagulant? Yes, it depends. If the patient takes a new anticoagulant, you can go ahead without the drug's interruption. If the patient takes the, uh, like, Coumadin, you need to suspend the Coumadin um, and to use the heparin instead of the Coumadin. And after three days, the patient can, uh, can take again the Coumadin. But basically, actually, with the new anticoagulant drugs, you can uh, perform the surgery without problem. Obviously, you need to check the, the, um, the time of the coagulation and the number of the platelets, for example, in the patient with some systemic disease. But using the cavitation effect and using the cell in irrigation, 
we can reduce the bleeding also in the patient, for example, with the high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. This is another advantage that we can have using the piezo, the ultrasound, and the cell irrigation at the same time. So I think uh, I think Professor Angelo, we lose uh, just to, for a while the contact with uh, Dr. Nada. Uh, I would like to uh, to uh, to tell you that uh, for your amazing amazing uh, presentation, it was really clear. Everything was very nice as usual. Thank uh, you. Even behind the screen or. Uh, in person, it's always a pleasure to get you, you. Uh, with us, uh, Professor Cabarelli. I'm always with me, your book, and, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you see, and uh, your uh, uh, complimentary, uh, also uh, kind words for Amid, our association. Thank you very much for being our first partner. Thank you very much for all. Thank you. And we, Thank we you. are heading to receive you very soon in Marrakesh. Absolutely. Thank Thanks. you to uh, the Wasol Dentist Group and the amazing and the great uh, work that uh, may, was made with uh, Dr. Kamal bin Mansour and uh, the excellent also moderation by uh, Dr. Nada Abu Talib. Uh, it was a great pleasure Absolutely. to have you with us to, tonight, even if it's a little bit much, uh, too late. But uh, I know that you are flying, flying tomorrow to Venezia. Uh, yeah, Professor Angelo, and you need to have just a small rest and to pack your luggage, even small, <laughs> but you have to fly very soon. So uh, happy well, to... Before to end, uh, I would like to thank uh, for the kind invitation, and uh, I'm very happy to announce my next course with Amit. I'm very happy to have this amazing partnership and fellowship with Amit. And uh, on the 1st and the 2nd of April, I will be in Marrakesh with Amit for the second module of the master program with Amit about the treatment of atrophic jaws using the minimal invasive procedure. So thank you again, Amit, for this amazing, amazing educational program. Thank you, Professor, for your generosity. You have well detailed the subject. I also want to thank Dr. Bouzakri Khalid for all his efforts to ensure the success of this webinar. Finally, I would also like to thank all those who watched us live, as well as those who will watch this, the recorded stream. Sure. Thank you for your attention and your patience throughout the live stream. Tawasal Management promises to come back with more upcoming interesting webinars. See you soon. Sure. See you. Thank you, everyone. Have, have, a you safe, have, a, have a safe trip, Angelo. Thank you. See, See you, you again. Thank, Thank you. Have a safe flight.